Hi everyone, Catherine and Dave here from Fantasy Fitnessing, and we are going to preview the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge. Just gonna say sort of who's going, how strong the field is, and then Dave's gonna have some fun picks and things at the end. So, starting off first, past games athletes. There are eight men and four women that are coming back to see if they can get a games ticket. And there are 18 men and 18 women that are past semifinal athletes. Thanks so far, that's the most we've had for both sides in terms of past semi athletes in all the ones that we've previewed so far. So that's interesting. That's really good to see. And then kind of looking a bit more specific to how people have done so far this season. The top five athletes out of the open on the men's side was Saxon Panchik, Dallin Pepper, Tyler Christoffel, Jake Berman, and Trevon Benton. And then on the women's side, it's Brooke Wells, Faith Ferguson, Marissa Flowers, Sydney McKaylison, and Shelby Neal. And then we looked at sort of worldwide quarterfinal rank. And we have Noah Olson, Saxon Panchek, Spencer Panchek, Tyler Christoffel, and Dallin Pepper that were in the top five of this field in the worldwide, or worldwide quarterfinals. And then on the women is Daniel Brandon, Brooke Wells, Cindy McAllison, Kelly Clark, and Faith Ferguson. So a fair number of repeated athletes being top five in the open as well as in quarterfinals. So that's good. And then we kind of look at the field strength as a whole. And we looked at it in terms of like the whole field, in terms of like advancing qualifying spots, which is five games tickets and then three last chance. So that's sort of like the top eight. And then how many game spots is five. So it's the top five athletes, like how strong the semifinal is against the rest of them. So on the women's side, in terms of total field strength, it's fourth. In terms of advancing spots, they drop down to seventh. In game spots, they're also seventh. So it's kind of the field as a whole is quite competitive, but they don't have as many like top end athletes coming out of the worldwide quarterfinals. And then on the men's side, the total field strength is second. And then in terms of advancing spots, it takes number one. And then game spots, it goes down to second again. There's some big names in here. It's a competitive field for the men's side of things so that's a bit of a rundown on who's there kind of the field as a whole and now i'm going to pass it over to dave to see sort of things to watch and then we'll get his picks all right thanks Catherine. uh so this time we'll start on the women's side and so the biggest storyline that i'm watching on the women's side is brooke wells's return to the competition floor so she had the you know terrible elbow injury last year at the crossfit games um, which really was Kind of the, the first year at the games that we saw her reaching her potential. I think she was in a top five spot when the injury happened. Uh, and it definitely looked like the year of training with Proven um, and Shane Orantia and the crew down there was really starting to pay off. So it was so sad to see her not be able to finish the game. So hoping to see her back on the competition floor uh, and just kind of seeing how that el elbow does um, in a real life competition. Yeah, having her back on the competition floor and looking as good as she is this season is awesome. So excited to see how this goes down at semifinals for her. Uh, and then, you know, after that, you know, really looking at the, you know, field strength, you know, I think the, the top two are pretty nailed down between Brooke Wells and Daniel Brandon. Uh, and then there's a couple other games athletes from last year here. So we got uh, Bailey Royale, um, who's training out of Mayhem with the crew down in Cookville. And Cindy Michaelison uh, was a games rookie last year, um, made the move um, down to Boston from Winnipeg um, to train at CF&E uh, with comp train there. So I kind of think that they are going to fill in a couple of the game spots as well, which really creates a lot of room for everybody else uh, in the competition. So uh, I think there's three people to watch really to make a, a rookie appearance. So first one also out of cf &E, Emma Gardner, um, she's only 19, and this is really going to be her first in big or first big in-person competition um, in kind of a main field. You know, she was uh, a teen athlete, and I think she finished third at the Pit 
fitness team throwdown uh, in 2020. I think her games ticket got canceled that year when um, all the age group qualifiers um, got axed. So uh, interesting to see what she does on a in-person competition. Uh, second athlete to watch, um, Kyra Milligan. Uh, she's a bit older, 25, uh, training with the underdogs crew. I think she was part of the team underdogs team that finished uh, five or, fifth or sixth down at Wadapalooza this year. Uh, and another person, Faith Ferguson, she's only 21. Uh, she did have strong finishes in quarterfinals at 25th. And she had a 30th at Wadapalooza back in January there. So I think, you know, with the with how the field is shaping up, one of those three people could make a jump into a, a games qualifying position. Yeah, that's, it's kind of exciting with a list like that of sort of up and comers to see how they do follow them through the season. Are they like going to get the last chance, get a games ticket for their rookie year? It's always fun to watch people coming up. Yeah. And, and to see an exciting race, it should be again, fun to watch to, to see people battling for that last spot. Yeah. Uh, and then on the men's side, uh, really see this kind of as a battle between kind of the old guard and the new guard of the men's field. So on the old guard side, you got Noah Olson and Cole Sager. Uh, and then kind of looking at the new, newer athletes, um, Sanson Patrick seeming to have a breakout year last year, looking to follow up with that. Uh, and Dallin Pepper, who was the day one leader last year at the West Coast Classic semifinal and just missed out in six spots. So it'll be interesting to see how um, Saxon and Dal and Pepper kind of on the upswing of their careers while um, Noah and Cole Sager kind of nearing that tail end, but by no means are they out of the competition. Yeah, that's a fun race. I like that, the old versus new. Yeah. And then, again, battle for fifth spot. Um, see Spencer Panjic. Uh, so he was 11th in quarterfinals this year, uh, but was 10th last year in quarterfinals. So uh, he does seem to perform strongly in that type of competition environment, but he didn't, I uh, don't know if he made it to the last chance qualifier last year. So hopefully you can see him turn around the, the strong performances in quarterfinals uh, and apply it to um, Mac this year. And you just got Tyler Christoffel. Um, he just missed the games last year um, twice. He was on the outside of the bubble. So he was sixth at the Atlas Games, and then third in the last chance qualifier. Uh, so he's also training down um, with the Mayhem crew. And so it'll be interesting to see him on the competition floor since we didn't see him at all last year because he got uh, online semifinals and last chance. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see him um, throw down in person. Uh, and then Jake Berman, um, potentially the, the best athlete to never make the games. He has had a, a top 60 finish in the CrossFit Open five of the last six years. Uh, and I think he's one of those athletes that we saw who's had a top 10 event finish in the Open for the last five years running. So um, has a strong performance there, just hasn't been able to convert that into an in-person competition. His best in-person competition is a ninth um, back in the 2019 Lowlands Throwdown in the sanctional days. So hopefully, again, another year, even though he has been you know, at it for so long, I think he's only 25 or 26 training out of training think tank. So um, maybe this is his year to turn it around. Yeah, those are all fun ones to watch. I didn't realize that Jake Berman's been that good for that long in the open. Definitely time to get that thing converted into the games. Yeah, he's, it's interesting to see because he does show, put up these, you know, really impressive performances in the open when, you know, everybody's there. But then in person, he's always kind of mid-path. Like he was... Um, 14th last year at West Coast, 18th at Dubai the year before, 17th at Filthy 150. Um, so it's hopefully this is his year to to break out and uh, make it to the games. Yeah, that'd be great to see. All right, now it's time to commit for your top five in Dark Horse, starting with the women. Okay, uh, on the women's side, so I got Brooke Wells on the top of the podium, followed by Daniel Brandon in second. I think it'll be a, a fun battle between those two, uh, and they should be head and shoulders above everybody else. Third place, Cindy McAllison. Uh, she's just coming off an 11th place finish in North American quarterfinals, so impressive performance for her in a big jump of, compared to last year. Fourth place, again, games athlete from last year, Bailey Royale. And then in fifth place, I have Faith Ferguson. 
I just kind of like she has a bit more in-person competition than some of the other athletes uh, I mentioned there to watch. And then Dark Horse, uh, Kelly Clark. Uh, so she is uh, 35 years old, so not what we would see from a, a games rookie typically, but she was 46 overall in North America for quarterfinals. So um, definitely was fourth in this field in terms of that competition. So uh, maybe she is able to convert that uh, into a game spot uh, at the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge. Nice. Definitely a couple names that we haven't seen sort of in that top five position. So awesome. Interesting picks. <laughs> and then on the men's side, so I got the the new guard on top with uh, Saxon and Pepper going one, two followed up by Noah Olson and Cole Sager. And then fifth place, uh, I got Spencer Panchik um, coming in this year ahead of Tyler Christopher, who I think will be sixth and head into Lance last chance for a second year in a row. Uh, and then my dark horse mentioned it earlier, Jake Berman. Um, he is able to show he has some elite athleticism um, in the open. So maybe this is his year to convert it in an in-person comp. Awesome. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see if he can get that games ticket for Berman. All right. So that is our preview of the mid Atlantic CrossFit challenge and exciting. Our fantasy games are live. So go to fantasy and set your week one, week one lineups. Um, it's a salary cap game that we're running each week with athletes that are competing on those weekends. And there's also draft games that are going to be open so you and some buddies can get together and actually just draft athletes as sort of like that style of fantasy game. So everything's live. Make sure you're following us at in, on Instagram at fantasyfitnessing.com and get your lineups in. We're giving Gooder sunglasses away to the podium of the salary cap game. If you and your buddies talk and follow CrossFit at the gym, there are affiliate leaderboards automatically set up if you put your affiliate in your profile. So then you can kind of just compete with those people that go to your box. So that's always fun, another way to compete. And yeah, I think that's about it. Gonna drop a few more of these semi-final previews and have some fun on the fantasy games. So yeah, we'll see you on the leaderboard.